Hey friends all over the world, Dr. Keenan here, and I want to share with you a very, very serious dream that I had about the coming storm. And I, I shared a little bit about this uh, before. I did a, uh, I did a, I think a video some time ago about, about this. Now, as you know, many of you know about the Nor'easter storm and thousands are without power. Thousands are without power right now. And, uh, you know, they're, they're still calculating the devastation of this nor'easter storm. It's like something that we've never seen before. But there is another storm coming that I believe is more severe and more serious than the storm that we're seeing. And this is not to uh, diminish the, 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 the catastrophic damage of this nor'easter storm. It's not to diminish that. But I believe that this dream that the Lord gave me is very, very, very um, serious. So, well, let me just share the dream with you um, that that God gave me. So, you know, the Lord gave me this prophetic dream. I was in Texas, actually. This was ironic. I was in Texas. And as I was in Texas, a storm had come from uh, the central, like the, the, the north, the northern United States down to the central slash northwest, north central. And it came all the way down toward Texas. And as I was um, sort of observing, observing the, the damage of the storm, this was like a storm I'd never seen before. It was like a blizzard of blizzards, meaning that anything that it touched was instantly frozen. I mean, this is not, this is like something from a, an apocalyptic movie. Anything that it touched was instantly frozen. And people would literally be running and, and the storm would catch up with them and they would freeze over on contact. And then, um, you know, cars would be frozen, light poles would be frozen, buildings were frozen, uh, lakes were frozen, but they were frozen on, on contact at an instant. And so in the storm, myself and a group of ministers, we began to run. We began to run for shelter, run for safety. And so we were running, 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 running. And finally, we ran into a building. And so we ran into this building. We began to lock the door. And we were stored up in this building, but the storm was encroaching. And all these ministers were looking at each other. We're like, what are we going to do? And all of a sudden, as I looked, I saw there was a furnace, but it wasn't a regular furnace. It was like a, like a cast iron furnace from the 20s, like those old cast iron furnaces that used to be in buildings in the, in the 1910s and 1920s. It was this huge black cast iron furnace. And um, I would say from the 1900s. And so I heard a voice say to me, light the furnace. And that's, so I just, I began to light the furnace. I don't even know how I lit the furnace. I just began to light the furnace. And um, so as I, as I lit the furnace, the furnace caught on fire uh, and it began to melt the ice, the ice was everywhere. It began to melt the ice that was coming on the roof and melt the ice that was coming on the driveway and melt the ice. And it began to thaw the ice in the neighborhood of the community. And, 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 the, and the, the heat of the fire began to counteract the freeze, began to counteract the, the effects of the storm. And so the Lord spoke to me in the dream and he said, I'm reigniting the flames of revival to counteract the storm of compromise that's coming upon the land. He said, I'm, I'm igniting the flames. And I think that this has some physical implications. I think we are going to see 
We're going to see some weather weather patterns be a little bit um, uncanny and, and just sort of unorthodox and, and just things happening in the heavenlies. We're going to see that. But I believe it is a representation of the spiritual side of this. And I believe that a storm of compromise is what we need to prepare for. And many have been frozen in compromise. Many pastors and leaders have been frozen in compromise. They're compromised. It doesn't mean that they're not good people, they don't love God, but they have been frozen in compromise. The storm of compromise. And so God says to me that it is time for you and I to ignite the furnace of revival. The, there must be an awakening in our culture. There must be awakening, an awakening in America. There must be an awakening in our churches. The churches weren't prepared for 2020. Churches weren't prepared for it. And that's why many churches never survived. They were told they're still frozen till today. They have not thought out. And so I believe everybody's focused on the physical weather. But this is not just about the physical weather, it's about what it represents. It's about what's happening spiritually in the atmosphere that many people have gone cold in their spirituality. Many people have gone cold in their faith. Many people have gone cold in their worship because of the storm, because of what has happened, because of all the things that they have seen, because of all the disappointment and the duress and the anxiety, people have gone cold and there must be an awakening. We must ignite the flames of awakening once again. We must reignite the flames. That is the key to overcoming what the enemy is trying to do in the earth. But I want to just encourage you, there is a remnant of people who have not compromised. There's a remnant of people who have not bowed their knee to the system of this world. And that's why we need to come together like never before. We need to bind, we need to we need to band our resources together, our faith together, our worship together, and we need to experience a convergent awakening. Gone are the days you're arguing about non-essentials. If you believe in Jesus, that he died on the cross for your sins. He shed his blood, was raised again from the dead, and that he is the only way to salvation. Then you're my brother or my sister. And we need to bind our faith together. Just like we did, just like in the dream, a remnant of believers, a remnant of leaders came together and began to, to unite. And after they were united, they were ignited. Hear what I just said. After they were united, they were ignited. And only then was the storm stopped. It wasn't stopped by some, you know, outside act. It stopped because people ignited the flames, ignited the furnace of awakening. I believe we need to do the same thing today. Please share this and remember that Jesus is Lord.